Center and Gallery, and my co-curator, 
Gabriel Byard. I'm honored to welcome you all to Makabo Sabidi's Walking House. And thank you to the wonderful Amusina, whose moving and powerful praise song has honored and paid tribute to this great artist as the national treasure that she is to all of us. It's remarkable to think that this extraordinary body of work around us today has been missing, presumed stolen in Sweden for 32 years. I, call it, I called it serendipity when my colleague, Prof. Karen van Fey, contacted me from an international conference in June last year, asking me to give her Helen Sabidi's contact. Her Swedish colleague, Ilva Sorgren, attending the same meeting, told her that a portfolio of her work had been found in an attic in a high school in Yoping. I called Mam Makabo, letting her know I had this good news, and I made it time to bring all the emails and correspondence revealing this find. So that same morning, I had to first meet with my new intern, Gabriel Bard, who was on recess from his master's studies in New Museum's program in London. Gabriel was volunteering at the Artist Proof Studio, interviewing graduate students to write a review. I decided at the moment of meeting him that I needed an assistant to follow up on this remarkable story. And I took Gabriel with me to Makabo's house and tasked him with interviewing her for the full story about these works. It was a most apt connection as she felt strongly that the work was not hers and that it came back as a gift to the youth at this very moment, 30 years into our democracy. So this became Gabriel's master's project, and he spent many days of long visits recording, listening to her stories and dreams, searching through her records, and piecing together the pieces. Mark Reed from the Everard Reed Gallery, who looks after Makabo, both through her abundant creativity and the many dry years that she's unable to work, immediately partnered with me to bring the works back home. Peter and Rika at the UJ Gallery readily embraced the idea of hosting the exhibition at the gallery, as the hope is for her to be conferred an honorary, doc honorary doctorate when she's ready. So Gabriel returned to his semester studies in London, and Mark sponsored his visit to Sweden, where he spent five days conducting interviews, searching for the missing work, and packing up the work to carry home. He landed back in South Africa in the morning of mid-December and was at her house two hours later. She couldn't wait. Paul Mills beautifully captured this moment on video of the excitement and celebration of Gabriel's arrival, cradling the last work in his arms and handing them over to her. She felt her lost children had returned. Please watch that short video on, on the screen. So we are thrilled to have arrived at this remarkable moment. I have to thank the spirits of serendipity, but more particularly, Makabo's ancestors who, as I've come to understand, orchestrated this entire sequence of events. The period of lost and found has been so rich with stories that are too many to tell, but Gabriel has arranged many walkabouts over this month for schools and groups to be able to share some of them. So to my task as MC, First, to observe protocols, acknowledging our distinguished guests. Um, our Vice Chancellor, Prof Professor Mpedi, could not make it this morning and has extended his apologies. But Prof. Rodney, Prof. Eva Rodney Gumedi is here, who's the Senior Director of Internationalization at UJ, our Executive Dean, Prof. Federico Freski, the Swedish Deputy Head of Mission, Christian Fogelstrom, 
and there are some extraordinary family and friends of Mama Kabo who are here to pay tribute and to honor her. So it is my honor now to introduce Prof. Federico Freschi, the Executive Dean of the Faculty of FADA, or Faculty of Art, Design and Architecture. We are exceptionally happy to also have him back home after his calling to do a four-year term at the other end of the world in a remote place in Dunvegan in New Zealand. He provides the much needed and vibrant le leadership that we've been missing. He's an accomplished opera singer, scholar, author, but enabler that connects the threads that he like ignites electricity. So, Prof. Reski, please join. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Sunny Bonani. <laughs> A very warm welcome to all of you. It is indeed a very great pleasure and privilege to be here um, and to be in the presence of Mama Chabo Sibili. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you also, Kim, for that kind introduction. And yes, it is indeed a cause of celebration this morning. A homecoming is always a splendid thing. Um, and you know, as Kim says, this is something that I can relate to very personally, having spent four years abroad um, and just knowing after those four years that I had to come home. <laughs> so it's a great pleasure to be here and it's a great pleasure to be celebrating a homecoming um, of such an extraordinary stature and quality. Um, as Kim has said, the serendipity that enabled this work to return to us really is extraordinary. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's a great moment of celebration for us um, as a university to be able to acknowledge the work of Mama Chabo Mapula Helen Sebidi, who surely deserves credit as one of the matriarchs of South African art. Um, Kim has characterized her as a national treasure, and I think that is absolutely uh, the most, the only possible way to describe her. Her career spanning more than three decades, um, and particularly uh, in a context where she could maintain that career against impossible odds positions her as one of the most important resistance artists amongst many other uh, attributes in South African art history. And indeed, at this moment, when we're celebrating 30 years of, of democracy in South Africa, I couldn't think of a more appropriate time to acknowledge the extraordinary contribution that you've made, Mama, Mama Khabo. Uh, and particularly in that space of enabling us to see through her eyes and through the eyes of her ancestors what it means to be South African in its many complexities um, and all the complex ways of being South African. Um, so we are indeed greatly privileged to have these works back in South Africa. It's a great, uh, it's a great honor for us as the University of Johannesburg, as our, our absent vice chancellor likes to say, well, absent this morning, um, with deep regret he couldn't be here, um, as he likes to call it, the great University of Johannesburg. And, of course, its greatness is enabled by the extraordinary people who work here and the extraordinary energy with which they embrace projects like this. And its greatness, of course, is of course also um, thanks to our partners, whom I'll, I'll thank uh, at the end of this, uh, this morning's proceedings. But it's also thanks to the generosity of extraordinary individuals like Mama Khabo, who are willing to share with us and to partner with us so a very big thank you to everyone, a very big thank you to all of you for being here this morning um, and for making this the extraordinary and special event that it is. You'll have more thanks from me later on, but for now I'm going to hand back to Kim so that we can get the proceedings underway. Thank you so much. <laughs> This week, I attended a special event of South Africa Sweden University Forum, or SASO, which was knowledge sharing and a networking event in Pretoria to prepare for a two-day sustainable development conference of 40 universities in Sweden. And one of Makabo's unfulfilled dreams was to present her work in Sweden. So my colleague, Prof. Brenda Schmarman, who's been quite involved in this epic journey of returned work, invited me to join her panel 
to present the documentary video and share Makabo's Swedish South African story. So next month, I hope to be bringing the unfulfilled part of her story back to Sweden. And so it gives me enormous pleasure to introduce the Swedish Deputy Head of Mission, Minister Councillor Christian Fogelstrom, who, when he heard this remarkable story, the embassy agreed to partner with UJ in co-funding and co-hosting today's opening events. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Also there in the back. Hope you can hear us and see us in the front here. My name is Christian Fogström. I'm the Deputy Head of Mission at the Swedish Embassy here in Pretoria, and we're so happy to be here with you today. Uh, dear professor, dear dean, uh, dear heads of departments, dear artistic legends in the room, uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, and we're so happy to work together with the, the you know, University of Johannesburg Art Gallery uh, and Everett Gallery on this um, project here today. So today really marks uh, an extraordinary occasion as we pay tribute to the remarkable artistic journey of Ma Helen Sebidi, her commitment to indigenous knowledge systems and rejoice in the return of this 28 lost artworks from Sweden. And we're not just here to showcase art. We're also here to deepen our cultural bonds, following Sweden's and South Africa's commitment to fostering intercultural dialogue, including actually uh, MOU with the Ministry of Arts and Culture uh, that uh, we've had for a couple of, of years now. It's uh, quite important, uh, we're building on the long history between S Sweden and South Africa, trying to foster the people-to-people -people contacts that is really based in the long engagement between our countries and the engagement for democracy and human rights and freedom over the years. We're very happy about that. Um, this commitment aims to spark creativity fostering exchanges among cultural institutions, groups, and individu uh, individual artists alike. And today we're also focusing quite a lot on how to make a living out of your cultural activities, uh, how, to, how to make a career out of your engagement in, in uh, if it's music, film, painting, artistic work in, in general. Uh, Sweden have some lessons uh, that we that some experience in this area and and we we uh, we have a lot to learn from each other in this in this field so that that is something we focus quite a lot on it today uh, it's not lost on any one of us here how time is playing a silent but powerful role today and as we marvel at Sibidi's work and their recovered artwork we are reminded of the resilience of art during moments of political turbulence. We find ourselves at a historic juncture where democracy itself is under threat. We see democratic backsliding in many parts of the world combined with reversal of respect for human rights, gender equality, um, the right to love who you want, um, we know that these trends can be reversed. Arts and culture plays a key role, reigniting our faith in democracy and sanctity of human rights. Sebidi's journey to Sweden back in 1991, following President Mandela's historic address to the Swedish parliament, the first address he made to any parliament outside the country speaks volumes about the power of art to inspire hope and transformation. I want to stop here for a second to say that I yesterday called the current principal of the Nyköping Folk High School in, uh, in Sweden and telling her about that I'm joining this event today and I wanted to hear a little bit more on, on, 
on how this artwork was discovered in, in their folk high school. I think you can see a picture over there on the little, little, little um, uh, opening uh, in close, to the, close to the roof in the attic where this uh, artwork was found by their caretaker uh, a year ago. I think it was a year ago. It was a very deep, deep uh, little cupboard up there and they, nobody had probably been there for 30 years. Uh, it, was, there was, it was full of um, Christmas decorations that had been lying there uh, collecting dust for, for many years. So it's quite extraordinary how they found this, this work and it's, it had been sought after because uh, you had been requesting to find this, uh, these artworks in Sweden for, uh, before and it's been really, it, they, ha they had not been able to find it. Uh, but now finally this caretaker found it and wondered what is this? Uh, what should we do with it? And we're so glad that it finally made it back. This exhibition embodies a legacy of exchange between South Africa and Sweden, as I said. It's echoing the visions of leaders like Mandela, Oliver Chambo, Lindive Mabusa, and Helen Sebidi, as they strive to build a shared democratic future. And today, as Kim mentioned, we have an extensive collaboration uh, within the SASUF network, the Sweden South Africa University Forum network, uh, where 40 universities uh, are collaborating. And in a month's time, we will have 250 South Africans traveling to, to Sweden uh, as part of this uh, collaboration. It's the biggest that we have uh, in, in the field of research and, uh, uh, and academia. And we're very proud of this collaboration and we hope to to uh, develop, develop it further. Uh, we have also worked with uh, Johannes, uh, University of Johannesburg uh, uh, many times on a noble symposium, uh, really acknowledging the, the science and the import, importance of research and generating new uh, knowledge. So we're very happy about that collaboration. And as we conclude, uh, let's pledge to nurture this exchange, leverage the power of arts and culture to elevate, elevate our collaborations and champions uh, uh, for the cause of democracy. And again, the heartfelt gratitude from the Embassy of Sweden in Sweden to Helen Sibidi, to the UJ Art Gallery, to Average uh, Gallery for bringing us on board in this collaboration today. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we all know Anne Messina's voice from the work of William Kentridge's Head and Load and Philip Miller's many compositions. Um, she's a singer, composer, theater performer, recording artist, collaboration. There's no way I can go through her profile. She's extraordinary. And it's a distinct pleasure to invite her to sing a ballad and I'll, I'd like to invite you first before I say anything more. And she's accompanied by the remarkable Paul Motiba on his percussions. So please can I welcome you. Isabel, 
And to introduce Mum Makavo, Helen Makula Sabidi, I call on Disela Opus Opa Sabidi to present the Sabidi clan anthem, um, followed by Siapati Makwapia on the to present a praise poem on the grandmother's side of the family to recite a praise poem. <laughs> We 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 ba tapin we we we. We 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 ba tapin we we we. Na kimoko kulupo mo kolo rachiko ke laki shikaran sa di ropeke ko fasu ko malicha ka noka la matsete ke le ko ba mpisa nso ko na so ko tumpi ko na taura shikwe. Ke mushima na o gata khudu ka lotolang khope ke fatela makwarane ke re khudu mosha o tla sala o tsoga ke pitsi. Ke noka ne nyane a ba tlapinga ka tlala metsi ke tletse le khulo le bagelli ba ntla ka mahla ko re ba ntsa ba ba reng ka phamola motho. Ga se ko ke yang koteng. Ko ke yang koteng ke national anthem ya rena ya ba tlapinga. Ke tlapi en tholo di tlapi tona madi ba ka tlala ka penologa. Ke mapa sha bolele tla ba mokholokwane ka le shalapa. Ke se ga gabisa metsa mantso metseng se pena marago se bonela ke bopula se tlhapa. Ke po ya se kolo e se na le sope madumela teng thaka di lena re tsa mafulela kho. Ke se rona sa pampa madi ba ba di mo le batho kwa le ribellano ka tlhakano ka le itumile kwena ya lo mamokwena. Re ba ntholo di tlapito na madi ba ko ena re tsewa ke metsi metsi a sa itse e tla yang le bone di le bo di beng e pitikisa na male mafika ga o fili ri balanoka re na ba gase bidi re bana ba khoshi ko mushate ra tja ra nwa re supana ka minwana ba re morupi ke mang a re ke nna thebetse o mphenle rapo ke ko konena mago monna tsa mokolo ke mang kobe o mmelo bo re tshilo sa o sitwa ke le rato le tuka Motlabeng ga ile bile e bone metsing e matswa ka bele e thelela thelelo ya thelela bodiba e khalema metsi o se khale ka mekhadi ya petso bo kubuli bo kwena pholotsa metsi ba itsi ba ile ba itekana yo thumong ba e khalemela go khautsa lebelo matsapatsapa Tlapi ga ena motlhala o ka se isa le morago tlapi solofela le raga metsi a phile wa bona Ria 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 ba tlapi ria ria ria
So, Mum Machabo asked me to invite, we have a special person who came all the way from Durban to be here, Mamdrin Machlope, who's another national treasure. And I think she asked me please to invite her just to say hello, and if I don't listen to Mum Machabo, I'm always in trouble, so please come up. Are there any UJazers in the house? Where are the young ones? UJazers, are you present? Yes, all the UJazers. You are here. This treasure is here for you. This treasure that has come back is here for you. I'm greatly honored. I cannot believe it. When I finally managed to get into that aeroplane and we took to the skies, <gasps> Woo! If I'm, a more animals, I'm going to visit my beautiful sister to celebrate on her behalf the joy that we feel in the greater arts community. When I told different people where I'm going and why, when I told my daughter where I'm going and why, and I kept mentioning, and today I'd like to also evoke the spirits of Oputuran Sihlai. Let's call the spirits. Oh, George Pemba. Let's call their spirits. Because we cannot. We cannot forget them. Let's evoke the spirits of those who came before us. We are so grateful for this day. I'm truly, truly honored. And when we talk about the memories of where we came from, the first day I met you, I didn't know what a journey we were gonna travel through. Gingi, gongo, gingi, gongo, gingi, gongo. The difficult, oh God, what is gingi, gongo for those who are currently disadvantaged? <laughs> <laughs> it is the seesaw of life. We say, gini, gono, gini, gono. That's what life is like. So we've gone through those ups and downs, and we kept on surviving. So that's why we say, relebucha mudimu, relebucha badimu. Spongo pezulu, spongo And so, in my double bass, I'll try and sing a little song for you. Where do they come from? Tell me, tell me, where do they come from? Tales so brave, tales so sad. Some are so funny, so crazy, unbelievable, hi, hi, bo. They come from the poor homes of memory. Watch my eyes, hear my voice. I tell you true, these tales are from the poor homes of memory. These tales are from the poor homes of memory, 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 from the bones 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 of
memory from the bones of memory from the bones of memory from the bones of memory from the bones of memory Thank you, thank you, thank you, UJ. Thank you, Sweden. Thank you, South Africa. Am I you, Jesus? You must grow up and shine. You, Jesus, you must grow up and shine. Agal, in the creative arts, we are nation builders. We don't play. Siabonga, Magwande. Thank you for that. Thank you for bringing the spirit. Thank you, Mum. Speedy, you always know best. So that is an introduction to a conversation between Mum Sabidi and Gabriel Bard, our young curator. I um, would like to call you up to the stage. And Gabriel has two questions to ask, um, and we're going to hear from her herself. Thank you. So today we're joined with Mahabo Sabidi, who's remarkable work we see in front of us today. And like Kim has mentioned a few times already, this is a culmination of many, many serendipitous moments, acts of care and love, moments to connect. And it's here that we celebrate the return of your work. It is here that we sit and understand that it is not your work, it's your grandmother's work. You're working for the youth and that we must learn through the grandparents. So today, naturally, two questions come up. I think that many of us would like to know, what does it feel to have your, how does it feel to have your work return to you after 30 years? I feel so amazed, I'm so overwhelmed, but the voices behind me, which I grew with, and being warned that the children I'm living for, that's why I'm living for longer. So it, it returned back to me all the time. The work was hidden, hidden in Sweden. It wasn't anything that had made it because this had to meet. The house that I was building uh, in, I was law, learned about it when I was young, that I'm building the house on you that should work hard and meet the world where the sun set when our sun rise. And it must knock on every house and be received and work with those people. Work hard now because those people are hard workers. So the word of living for the children, it's now so strong that now it, the country has been blown up. And those voices are with me every day. When I get outside, I, can, I don't know what to say because all those laws are not used anymore in this country. We need to return back to our culture and help our youth. We're living for the youth, that's how the grandparents had said. Especially my grandmother said, lived, she lived for 115 years and saying, why, people are wondering why am I living? I'm living for the children because their parents are completely demolished. I didn't know if I'm going to carry that cross. I didn't know that, but thank you, people, that we are together now carrying the cross together for the children to be able to see how we can do 
with them because all the laws must be woken up. Our children should be helped, should be safe to see reality. We were warned that every day you work, but the report is going up there until you leave the, the earth to the world, to the, where you came from. And when you get there, the book is open counting which day, every day, what have you done? And that must happen to our kids. I had to trust, struggle to make it happen. We were told that you're going to go onto the slippery mud, onto the thorns, or everything when you're walking on this road. And we did do that. It's a long way to go. But it's, it's, it's really meeting people who, who, who really knows or understanding where, why we are living in this earth. Thank you. And that brings, that brings me on. Thank you so much. That quite naturally brings me on to my second question, because now you've, you've said to me, now you can see the road. You can see the road once your, once your children have been returned to you. So my question is, what do you think the future of this work holds? What is your hope for the future of this work? The hope of this work, the future of this work, I don't know what you people could think of to keep this history, to make it work, and to hard work for it, and to always report back to it, and see how far we go, and what type of road we're taking. Can we keep this work somewhere and hide it so that we can keep on meeting there and see what we're doing with the children? It's a long way to go, but we need to keep the history strong and make it work. And also we, the memory should be, the memory of this work must be near us. It shouldn't be a dream of the theory of it, but must be real. It must be real, and we're making it real. Thank you so much for sitting with us and for sitting with me for so, so many hours. It's your story that we share here today, and it's with such honor that we share it with you, with your grandmother, with the ancestors, that we can work for the youth. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Gabriel. Um, I, I will hand over to Prof Bresky to give the official vote of thanks, but I'm, I first want to use this moment to say a personal thanks to Mama Khabo for the privilege of being able to facilitate this opportunity of the exhibition at UJ. The late in Klantla Ngaba who was my founding partner of Artist Proof Studio, introduced me to Makabo in 1991. And she became one of our founding members. When, when the studio burnt down in 2003, and Ntlantla Ngaba died in that fire, it was Mam Makabo who helped us get through that period. She knew what to do to carry her spirit out of the burnt remains and have his spirit present to bless the new studio when we launched at the bus factory a year later on the anniversary of that fire. She saw that he watched over us for 30 years when we were in Newtown. Almost every winter, I get a call from Makhabo summoning me to come and fetch a huge bag of oranges she says they're for the youth. When they eat one, they have the seed of my grandmother's hard work and growth. I must hand each orange to each of my students with her message, which I do. <laughs> she keeps saying this work is not mine, it's for the youth. So handing this curating project to Gabriel has been a blessing for us both. 
And then, including my two honor students, Kamo and Numboyo, who painted this timeline in Macabo style. Kamo? Yeah. There they are. They, they were treated to an extraordinary opportunity. We sat in the space and we asked Mom Kabo, well, what about the titles? She says, no, you, you'll find the titles. I said, how will we find the titles? She said, we'll do it together. And I called the students and Gabriel and we sat with the curators in the space and we took out each work and they came, the titles came and Kamo and Nomboyo translated them and their titles happened. And it was such a privilege and a special opportunity. So I'm thanking, I'm thanking you, I'm thanking them, but I'm handing over to Prof. Fresky to say a very special thanks to, an official thanks to everybody who is here. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Um, wow. <laughs> Is all I can say before I start open things. What an incredible event. You know, the events that you come out feeling inspired, feeling motivated, feeling enriched, feeling blessed, feeling excited. And this for me has been one of those, those mornings. So a very big thank you to all the amazing people who contributed. Um, and by Kleena, I'm going to borrow the UJs's. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so thank you. And, um, right, so a whole lot of, I've got a lot of thanks, a whole page of them, which I think just goes to enforce the point that, you know, an event like this really takes a village um, in many ways. And I think that is so much part of the message of this whole event and the whole spirit that informs Mama Kabul's work, that it really takes all of us. It takes a village. Um, and so the, the villages that I'd like to single out, and it's a great pleasure and privilege to do so. Um, first to start with Mr. Christian Fogelström, um, from the uh, Swede, the deputy of Mishnah from the Swedish Embassy, um, whose support and whose engagement with this project has really enabled it to happen, along with his staff. So thank you, Christian. It's really been a great, great pleasure. Um, to uh, Professor Ilva Rodney Gumede, um, our he uh, head of global engagement here at the University of Johannesburg, um, who really assisted in many respects in facilitating the uh, engagement with our Swedish partners. Thank you, Ilva. Um, of course, you know, uh, uh, it's impossible to know where to position this thank you. Should it be at the start, should it be at the end? But it pervades this entire list of thanks. And that is, of course, to Mamachado Helen Sevili. <laughs> <laughs> Mamachabo, I hope you can feel the love in this room um, and the immense pleasure and privilege that it is for me personally, but speaking on behalf of the University of Johannesburg and I think of everyone here to say what a, what a privilege and thank you. Siabonga kakul, siabonga. Thank you. We say, of course, also a very big thank you to the family and friends of Mamachabo. Um, for the amazing praise singing that, you know, as I'm proud as a currently disadvantaged, I didn't understand, <laughs> but, but, but I felt the spirit and I felt moved by it. Um, and it meant something to me, as I'm sure it meant to everyone in this room. So that's uh, Dicele Opa Sebidi and Sepati Mokwape for their beautiful contributions. Um, we must, of course, give a very big thank you to Mark Reed. Mark, I see you sitting there. Thank you. Uh, Mark Reed from the Everard Reed Gallery. Um, for his uh, unstinting support of this exhibition, for the framing of the works, not least the getting of the mere framing them. Um, and Mark, thank you so much just for your continued support, not only of Mama Chabo, but indeed of being such a very good friend of the University of Johannesburg and of this gallery. Thank you. Um, and also indeed for the co-sponsorship of Gabriel's uh, trip to Sweden. Um, we also thank Mona Makwena. Uh, Mona, where are you? I saw you earlier. Um, thanks to Mona Makwena and Maud Motanyane for all their help and advice, working very closely with the curatorial team. Um, we thank Andres Oliphant, who's a longtime friend and confidant of Mama Chabo, who was here there to receive the work when it arrived and who conducted many of the searches 
for her over the years. Um, closer to home, we thank Paul Mills. Paul, I see you hovering around for uh, the video and photography that he did. Um, to our absent colleague, Professor Karen von Fay, who uh, was abroad at a conference um, and who quite, uh, quite accident, you know, quite by chance, uh, was the catalyst for the discovery of these works. So really an amazingly serendipitous event. Um, the ancestors truly have spoken through so many people to enable us all to be here today. Um, a big thank you to Dr. Sinetemba Makanya, our colleague from, uh, uh, who's an advisor in African cosmology and is the storyteller and voiceover in the videos. Um, of course, wow, Anne Massina, <laughs> Mpo Motiba, wow. <laughs> it's a, it's a, words fail me. It's not often that I'm at a loss for words, but I am lost to express the incredible joy and the privilege of hearing the two of you perform. It was extraordinary. Thank you. <laughs> um, and for the work that you do on that percussion is just, it's, it's, it's transcendent. It's just amazing. Thank you so much. Um, so that was a truly beautiful contribution to this morning. Um, and much closer to home, of course, um, as I said in my introductions, you know, the great University of Johannesburg is great because of its people. Um, and the, the greatness of our people in this, in my faculty, cannot be overstated or, or, or under, under celebrated. So particularly in this context, um, a big thank you to Peter Jacobs, who's the director here of the UJ Art Center, to Rika Norkia, who's been the acting curator here in this gallery, um, to Lake and Morgan Bytus, um, and the whole installation uh, staff and team from the Art Center for making this morning possible. Um, honestly, there's nothing we can throw at them that they don't do with enormous energy, enthusiasm, and consummate skill. So a big thank you to all of you. <laughs> Um, Kim has already singled out the two UJs. <laughs> uh, those are the two visual arts honors students, uh, Kamuchela Mosechla and Nomvio Maseko, um, who participated in the group process of the naming of these works and also painted the, the beautiful uh, banner behind me. Um, and then a thanks also to our, our, gosh, Gordon, how do I find the right adjective to describe you? Our, of HOD of the head of department of visual arts, who's you know an extraordinary artist, curator, arts facilitator, ambassador, entrepreneur. Um, Gordon, thank you for your always for your support of everything that we do um, in the faculty uh, and in this in this gallery. Um, our Swedish contacts, uh, we thank Jesper, Jesper Österberg and Ilva Sjögen from the gallery Fiskuset, who found and protected the works. Uh, we thank Christina Bjork for the retelling of the Swedish story in the catalogue. Um, and then I suppose last, but certainly not least, we thank the curators. Um, <laughs> you know, the work that curators do is often invisible, right? We go to exhibitions and we see the beautiful space, we see the amazing works, we see the lighting, um, and we celebrate the artist. But we forget that, you know, it's sort of, it's the, the, the behind the scenes that makes that possible that directs the way in which we look at the work, how we see it, how we interpret it. That's the work of the curators. Um, and I know, Kim, this has been a project of extraordinary passion for you. So thank you for sharing that passion with us and for bringing this to us. Um, Gabriel, it's been amazing that you could be involved in this and that you could give a voice to Mama Khabo's vision that this should be a project that is driven by uh, young people. So an enormous um, thanks to both of you Siabonga Kakulu, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thank you. <laughs> so I think it, it gives me great pleasure to ask Mum Anne Messina to close the proceedings by singing a song for us, which brings to, to the end this event. Thank you. It 